Hi guys, welcome to uh, another one. It's been a bit. I've had a bit of a break because I've been so busy at work, uh, getting uh, ev getting everything done uh, for work since I returned. But this is the trip uh, here from uh, La Paz, where we we did that epic uh, death road day, which was fantastic. To now we're going to Uni uh, Sala de Uni, the salt flats, uh, and I just wanted to mention this girl, Dominica. I'm going to get it wrong. I'm going to get it wrong. Dominika Gorlitskova, um, a Czech girl, I'm pretty sure, um, who's traveling on that motorbike from from North America, from the, the top to the bottom. So you can see she's going from uh, all the way from the top of uh, all the way across to Buenos Aires. And she made it too. Um, she's done a, quite a few adventures and she writes about her on a blog. So here we are. Um, just leave, we're, we're about midway through now. I'm going to explain a few things to you here. There's Chris. Here we are. We're not far from uh, the uni now. I don't know what happened to the video videos we shot during the day. I've got no idea. Uh, but this is uh, the back of... We've got a, a camera on the back of uh, Chris's bike and a camera on the back of mine. So we've missed out on hours of footage. I don't know whatever happened to it. Um, but this was a lookout that we were uh, coming in. We're about probably 20, 30 miles from uh, uni. It was a 12 hour trip that day. It was a long, long day and we ended up going to uni, into the city. I, I was staying a, a few miles out of town and um, and we went into uni, had a few beers and just relaxed. We were both pretty knackered. Uh, Chris had to find a place and we waited. You know, so we spent about an hour waiting around for, um, uh, for a place for Chris and um, and then we went from there. So I'm just gonna chop through this. This is gonna be a fairly short video because I don't have much footage and, and not many photos. And the next video will be us doing the salt flats, uh, salt flats which was a pretty exciting day. But um, I met Chris on the Star Rat, the, that German ship. And we traveled, uh, we, we, we spent a little bit of time in, in Cartagena in Colombia together. And then we went from there to, uh, and we met up in La Paz and did Death Road together which was fantastic. Death Road is, you know, I mean, it could be scary, but it's not really scary. Um, the road to Death Road that the tour guide uh, uh, took us on was friggin' pretty death-defying. Uh, but at the same time, it was, uh, it was great fun. Um, however, uh, so this was a pretty, I mean, Bolivia, once you got out of the, out of the city uh, in La Paz, it was pretty desolate, you know, and uh, uh, it was a pretty, pretty tough day's ride, and we were both pretty knackered once we got to uh, we got to um, uh, the uni, and, um, and I'll talk about it a little bit at the end of it. The, the crap that I had. I mean, Chris stayed in a little nice little hostel, and I stayed in a, quite a nice hotel, and uh, it was a shocking experience. Uh, <laughs> But anyway, yeah, we have a bit of, bit of fun here and just sw swapping. I, I think I stopped up here. There was a guy, you know, when you're on, when you're an adventure rider, you uh, you do this to see if the guy's okay. If he, if he needs any help, I think. Yep. He was just relaxing. I think I don't. He wasn't working on his bike. He was just having a break. So we got going. Uh, Chris is on a KLR. It's. It caused him quite a few problems uh, down the south, but he's now in Europe and he's been motoring along beautifully uh, there. But uh, I mean, he didn't spend much on the bike and he, he's going on an amazing adventure. Um, he's got, got a lot of experience on dirt bikes, mountain bikes, uh, you know, since he was a kid. Uh, so he's a good, he's a great guy to ride with. And, and he's the reason I, why he's so good to ride with, it's like nothing sort of faces him. Oh yeah, let's do this. Oh, let's go off on this road. Let's go and do this. Let's. There's no like, I don't want to do that. I'm too tired or something like that. And that's the sort of perfect riding companion. I mean, we didn't ride that much together on the whole trip, so we only rode two or three days all up on the whole trip. You know, over a six month period. But he was great the whole time. You know, so I don't know what he's like after that. But the, as an example, I, one of the other guys, Sam, who did the trip down as well, he was with a group of about six, eight, or ten. He joined a group of about six, eight, or ten, and then there was like 
eight of them, then six of them, then four of them, and I think the last time I saw it, there was only two of them left, and that was going south into uh, into Patagonia. So I don't know what happened to the rest of them. A few of them retired. Sam uh, finished up um, finished up uh, in, in I think Santiago. Sam finished up. You're a really good guy. We met. We caught up with them here in uh, uh, the boy band here. Well, there was one girl with them uh, here in. Uh, um, on the salt flats, and they gave us. They were really cool guys. There's an Australian guy in there as well, and they gave us. A, they gave me a hand because my bike's so heavy in the on the salt flats, it just buried itself. And the salt flats, once you get out on them, they're fantastic and they're hard, and you can ride, you know, 100 mile an hour if you wanted to. Um, uh, you can only spend a certain amount of time on there because you get a massive salt build up all over the bike. And so you've got to get it, and they're all taking apart their bikes and washing them. And we, we washed our bikes twice. Uh, once uh, at the place where you wash your bike, uh, just outside of it, because it's all set up for that. And then we went to a place and got it thoroughly done uh, the next day as well. Because it, with it, especially with the older bikes, even my bike, you get salt on there and it starts corroding at any of the points and stuff like that, you can get yourself in big trouble. So you, you don't really want to spend more than an hour on the salt flats if you can help it. And it would also depend on the time of year. Where the time of year we went on the salt flats, it was just at the end of the wet season. And so the, the, the flats were pretty wet. And so that's probably a little bit worse. If it was really dry, you wouldn't probably have the same amount. You still have problems, but you wouldn't have the same amount of problems. And we come across like all those herds of llamas and stuff like that along the way, alpacas uh, along the way. Just having a bit of fun, just swapping spots, swapping positions. Yeah, so, so it was a pretty good day's ride. It's always fun to ride every now and then with somebody. I, you know, I did the whole, pretty much the whole trip on my own. And, and then having someone to jump in and, and have a bit of fun with, you know, just cruising around. Um, having a bit of fun with it, I've got a bit of jitters there. Um, yeah, so um, so we spent, uh, I think we spent three, I spent three or four nights and, and Chris and I both went in different directions. I went into Chile and he went into Argentina from uh, Bolivia. Um, and I'll, I'll talk about that and uh, I've got a few video from that and that was a pretty tough day's riding, all, all off, pretty much all dirt. Um, all the way, uh, once you get about just oh, well, it's pretty much dirt as you leave uh, as, you, as you leave your uni. Um, there's a fair bit paved on the way that uh, Chris went, but then it turned to dirt, and it, and obviously uh, uh, Route of Forty is pretty tough at the top. You know, it's pretty much neglected. This is some shots of the. There's, you know. Yeah, they were. the thing about uh, these creatures, the alpacas and the llamas, is they they scare real easy, and so you could ride up close to them and they'll just run away. But the thing is, they run off in all different directions. Like if you got cat, cattle and stuff like that, they normally just if they're on the side of the road, they'll run away from the road. These things just dart in all different directions. It's crazy. So it's once you learn about them, you, you just basically stop, let them go past and then be on your way. I think this is, uh, I was just waited here and, and then Chris came up. So yeah, so now we get into uni and um, and uh, I'll just tell you a little bit about, that's the centre square, that's pretty much the only nice place in, in uni. Um, and the Dakar, that's the road that went to my um, hotel. It was ridiculous, you know. Um, it was so pathetic. I've never had seen any road like it in my life. You know, basically I lost a glove on there, a bolt came loose from my bike, because I had to ride in and out of there every day. It was crazy. And there's a guy, Alex, that I met along the way, and his father, they were really great guys, and we keep in touch now. They left it, they left the, the first day I was there. Um, so they, they, I don't think they rode on the flats. Um, yeah, because it was pretty hard to do. But anyway, the hotel was hopeless. Everything about them was like, you got there, they didn't help you unpack the bags. They told me to move my bike immediately. And I said, I've got to unpack my bike first. And it wasn't in anyone's way. 
The rooms were okay, um, but you know the internet wasn't working when I got there. It was filthy. The hot water wasn't working, and they basically the internet was like, oh, well, uh, you know, we get our internet from the clouds. What the hell does that mean? Uh, but anyway, uh, so to the next video will be. It's quite a nice little hotel as far as I look at. Next video will be in uh, on the Soulflex. Thanks, guys. Leave comments, questions, and comments below. Thank you.